So today we're going to talk about identifying and then dealing with coeluting compounds on your GCMS spec. Um, just to define coelution, that's when two different chemicals come out at the same time in your, in your uh, gas chromatogram. So you can't tell one from the other, just initially looking at it. So I'm going to open up this coelution1.acq data file. Since I have seen this before, I know exactly where to go. It's this peak at about 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, but before you do that, the first thing you should always do on this software is to do your search NIST slash user. This is essentially just telling your NIST database to reference where you have the scan selector set at. And it's comparing that to the NIST library, your scan to the NIST library scan up above it. So I'm going to zoom in on this peak at about seven and a half minutes. Zooming in there. The first thing I always like to do is something called walking the peaks. That's essentially taking your scan selector from the left side of that peak all the way to the right side of that peak and you're trying to look for changes in mass fragments in your scan. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm starting at scan 485 and I'm going to walk it to the right. Right now I'm seeing 117, mass fragments 117 here and then 82 over here as my primary ions. So as I walk it to the right, it's consistently like that until about halfway in. Right here we saw a big increase in 77 and 112 as we go over a little bit more. Now 112 has actually overtaken 117 as the primary ion in our scan. So when you see something like this, a drastic shift in your mass fragments along a single peak, you can think, okay, there's actually two or more compounds here. There's a coeluting compound. So now that we've identified that there is coelution, I like to visualize the coelution. So let's take our main ions. We had 117 on the, toward the beginning of the, the peak. And toward the later end of the peak, I think we had 112. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those here. So let's do 117 in blue. And then in black, we'll do our 112. So this is what the two different chemicals under that one peak are going to look like. So now we should think, how do I background subtract this to get a better reading? So right now my chlorobenzene B5 is hitting at 674 for my similarity index. Usually above 700 is considered reportable or good. So when I'm trying to ID this, I put it at the apex of the blue. This is where my blue peak is most prevalent. And then I want to subtract out as much of what is um, co-eluting with it, which is this black chemical. That's essentially can be thought of as our contaminant to the blue chemical. So my scan selector on the apex of the blue peak and then my background subtract tool is going to try to get rid of as much black as possible. Also, when you're placing your background subtract tool, you're trying to maintain as much blue as possible. So I want to keep my blue chemical, I want to get rid of my black chemical, and I want to keep as much blue chemical on this um, background subtract tool as possible. So if I move this over one, I think the ratio of black to blue might be a little better. We get an 819 SI, that's pretty good. Um, so that's our chlorobenz chlorobenzene D5 identification. You can do the same exact thing to try and get this black peak to identify a little better. So let's remove our background subtract tool. And let's try to get an ID for our black peak. So first up, I've selected the apex, the peak of this black chemical. I get a SI of about 824, which is good by itself. That's not a bad SI, I'd report that. But if we want to get rid of some of these mass fragments we don't care about, we'll try and select out the blue chemical from it. So it went from 820s to almost 900. It's a pretty good increase. Um, and if you look down here, it actually adds, has decrease the amount of 117 that you would have saw. So let's pay attention to our scan, our scan 494, and let's look how it changes when I remove our background subtract tool. So right now we're more or less seeing an exact matchup of the NIST spectrum and then our spectrum. As I remove this background subtract tool, you see a lot of 117 pop up, a lot of your 82 pop up. These mass fragments are what I got rid of by getting rid of this blue peak or this blue uh, representation right here. So that more or less covers it for how to identify coelution and then how to get rid of coelution um, in ERIQ. Thanks.